Hello everybody, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guides to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum as well as DVD Architect. And here we are in Vegas Movie Studio Platinum 17 in part one of an eight-part series we're calling Basic Training for Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. We're going to walk you through the program, show you the various workspaces in the program, teach you how to get your media, arrange your media, create a movie, and then eventually how to output the movie. Now, when you first start up the program, you'll be greeted by the welcome screen here. And on the welcome screen, you have a number of options. You'll see over to the left, your recent projects, and you can select from any of those. Or if it's an older project, select the option to open existing project and then browse to your older project. On the right, you see the options for easy creation, power user mode. Don't worry about these right now. We cover these in separate tutorials. Most of what we're going to be doing is going to be in power user mode throughout these exercises sizes and that's because power user mode takes advantage of the entire timeline and we want to do that here in these tutorials. At the top as you start a new project you have the option of creating your project in standard widescreen 16 by 9 that's the kind of video you get when you shoot with your phone held sideways or when you shoot with a camcorder kind of standard it's the shape of your television set or if you're shooting with your phone held upright in other words, you're shooting a portrait video, you can select tall. But we're going to work in a widescreen project. I'm just going to close this welcome screen right now. And here we are in our interface. Now, in order to start a project in Vegas Movie Studio Platinum, we have to begin a project. We could, of course, begin a project as we have here with just a blank screen, a blank timeline. And we can create a blank timeline just by clicking on this little button here in the upper left of the program. But I prefer to begin a project with some thought behind it. And the more prep, the more you decide in advance, the better and more optimal results you'll get. So instead of going to that little button, go up to the project menu here and select a new and that will open a new project dialog box or option screen. And from here we can create our project. Now you can create your project one of two ways, either based on your existing media or the media you're going to use in your project, or you can create your project based on what your output is. In other words, if you're planning to create a DVD, a Blu-ray disc, internet video, whatever, you can choose one of these options. I recommend that you base your project on the media itself. You'll just get the best performance from the program. So if you're shooting in standard AVCHD, this is kind of the industry standard for consumer video right now. It's what you get if you shoot with a camcorder, and it's what most phones are shooting on now. You'll want to select one of the AVCHD options, 1920 by 1080, either in an interlaced 60i or 24p. Don't worry about that. I'll explain that some other point and I do explain it in my book also. DV is tape based standard definition video considered to be a somewhat obsolete format. HDV likewise is high definition video from a tape based camcorder but also under HDV you have not only the options for high def video but at the top here these three are options for 4K video, so 3840 by 2160 ultra high definition video. Now, if you have no idea what the specs of your video are, the program has a nice tool here called Match Media Settings that will base the project settings on your media. So all you need to do is select that option, click on the Browse button, select one of the media clips, doesn't matter which one you do, that you're going to be editing, click Open, and now you can see down here the project has been set up automatically by the program to match the specs of that video. The more closely your project settings match the specs of your video, the better performance you're going to get all around. Now name, you can name your video. You don't need to do that now. You can do it later at any point while you're working, but I prefer to do it in advance and then select the option here to manage project files. That puts all of the project files, all the renders, all the previews, all of the work that the program is going to do with regards to that project in one subfolder. That makes it easy to find. It makes it easy to clean up later should you decide to remove the project from your hard drive. So just naming it and clicking on this checkbox, manage project files, creates that subfolder and opens you up in a project set up for your media. Now we'll talk in the next session about gathering your media and about editing it on your timeline. But for now, let's look at the interface itself. Now off to the left on the interface is a dashboard. 
This is kind of part of walking you through the process of editing your video. It's one of the easy editing modes. In all honesty, I don't find much use for it. I usually get rid of it. We've got our media files and we'll look more closely at all the things that go on in the upper left here. To the right is your preview window and we can resize these various workspaces or these various windows simply by, you see, as I hover on the scene between them, I get this little two headed arrow and I can just click and drag and resize these. So if I want my timeline larger, I can stretch up like this. If I need more room for my media files, I can stretch down like that. Now then, part two, we're going to actually get some media, put it onto our timeline and do some basic editing. We'll take a look at gathering our media then in part two of our eight part basic training with Movie Studio Platinum. I'm Steve Grisetti. See you soon.